Hello, uh, friends of the internet. My name is Austin uh, of Austin B Media. Um, there, it, I have um, a bunch of people. Um, Jason Aviz, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name. Avizano, Avizano. So close, Jason Avizano. And don't okay. worry, it's, it's not the first I, time. I, I butchered so many names. It's um, <laughs> uh, Lila Gorstein and Jesse Kendall from the film uh, Love Dump which is, I'm going to use my own description because I think it's the best way to describe it. It is like the most absurd thing you've ever <laughs> seen, but also a love story, but also <laughs> you can't look away. It's like a runaway train. You can't look away b from the cringe, but it's, but it's like you're constantly <laughs> battling that. Uh, portion of everything but um thank you uh so all of you so much uh for joining me here uh i know uh it's a travel day for so some of you um or some of you might already be in park city um so yeah in fact you know earlier this week the director of silent love uh the interview um was in like a park city cafe so i was like <laughs> Okay, this this is really uh we're really getting into the festival now, aren't we? That was almost me. I uh was at this cafe right before this, but then they were closing at three thirty. So I was like, oh god. So then I was able to check into the hotel, but it worked out. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad it worked out. I, you know, it's it's great to have all three of you here because then I could just ask like a la carte questions that um that um you know just really i think gel um oh austin start interrupt can you hear me yeah i can hear you jesse um i'm also driving with our film cinematographer matt mahaffey <laughs> bonus wow you, you have, have little four little loved up members here you got the whole team <laughs> wow Next, you're gonna like go to the back seat, and you'd be like, "And we have the composer here." Yeah, yeah. and the whole, every single and extra the in the film Under behind the me. Here are the dogs. <laughs> That'd be great if the dogs took an interview. Yeah, just and then subtitles appear like bark, bark, and they start speaking in their the language that they speak in the film, <laughs> the doggies. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this movie. Um. Since we we've got basically everyone here, this is great. Um, so you say you guys were um, kind of inspired by Hallmark movies, um, and I'll, I'll be honest, that would not have been my first thing. I would have thought like The Birds, or something like that. Um, I don't know. It's just what I what I as associate with it. But um, what what. What movies were you inspired by? I know that's a super like wine twirly answer or a question, but I'm curious. Yeah, um, I remember. So one of the movies that we were definitely inspired by was this movie on Netflix, maybe five years ago called The Coffee Shop. Um, that was the first one that me and Jesse like joked about originally that kind of got the process started where like, it was this girl working in a coffee shop and she constantly just had so much coffee shit on her face and was always like, I'm just so dirty all the time and constantly work at this coffee shop. And then like the town mayor was trying to shut the coffee shop down. And I feel like the mayor was played by like a surprisingly famous actor. I'm going to look it up. Um, Jesse, do you remember any of the other movies that we were inspired by we watched a lot of hallmark movies yeah i think most of the other movies is just me and layla watching a bunch of hallmark hallmark movies separately and picking out little tropes that we liked from all of them but we also had a few non-hallmark movies that kind of found their way into the parody like uh the movie serendipity yeah which, which is a rom-com with john cusack and kate beckinsale i believe and it's a really stupid setup in that they they both meet each other randomly um, early in their lives, and they have a great night with each other. But 
I think Kate Beckinsale refuses to give John Cusack her number and instead puts she writes it, it down. A, yeah, she writes it down and says, if this book magically comes back into your possession in like a number of years, we were meant to be with each other, which is such bullshit. <laughs> Uh, it's also so kind of messed little... up in the movie because they both have partners and they like yeah. leave their their partners for each other <laughs> well as an avid watcher of rom-coms isn't that always the ca- case like is it always like i watched 50 first dates for the first time recently and i'm like oh well i guess this isn't the best example but um or maybe marry me would be a more recent example where it's like she's with a super hot guy, but she's gonna fall in love with the school teacher. It's like yeah. really, you've got Maluma and you're yes. falling in love with Owen Wilson. All right, but I also guess. Austin, like you nailed it in that it's the movie is not it, it. Hallmark is definitely an inspiration, but truly all rom coms like you've got Mail, Sleepless in Seattle. Like there's all these insane plot elements to these movies that we used to watch that are nostalgic now and we're just feel good films and love dump even though you mentioned uh before is so chaotic and crazy but still beautifully simple in the same way that sleepless in seattle you've got mail 51st dates marry me all are they all follow the same similar trope yeah and it it was funny i i I paused at like the exactly right moment when uh when uh the two uh jessica and um i forget the main character's name off the top of my head but when they first meet and you see the little gash in his uh leg and you can see the vfx move around a little bit it's it's one of those things where it's like it, it 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 if it if the VFX was perfect, it would ruin it. But like because it the you, you didn't sco- think they were perfect. Oh no no the string the string with the uh with the number on it. <laughs> there was like there was um another Hallmark movie that me and Jesse watched as research that um I forgot what it was called. I think it was called like Love and Message in a Bottle. And it's essentially like this woman gets fishes a message out of a glass bottle and like it turns out to be her shitty boss that she hates, but they're like messaging in love, not knowing the other one. Anyway, there's a part where like this, her sister heats up tea in a tea kettle and like is talking on the phone being like, I don't know, maybe you should just give it a shot. And she pours tea into the cup and you see that the tea kettle is completely unplugged and was never plugged in it was like an electric one and so like the whole time when she's like heating it up doing all the stuff you, the whole time you see that it's not plugged in and it's like I just love that stuff in these movies where all all of these things are overlooked yeah there's this gag which I I, I don't want to give too much of the jokes away here but it's when uh when um I believe uh tom was was that the main character's name oh todd 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 uh goes into love dump for the first time and he's just looking around and uh jessica has this thing with this like plastic chicken out of nowhere where it's like (laughs) just these close-ups of this chicken and i'm like this is really weird but it's also the right kind of weird where it's just like oh everyone is in on it and it's you know it, it it's just hilarious i, I won't give away the joke but it's it, it it's amazing um yeah i think we um sorry to interrupt you austin i think no we, worries we made the comedy of this movie with the hope that people would understand the type of weird it is or have like a feel for it. So there was, it felt like a little bit of a risk in that aspect, but you know, it's, uh, I think it worked out based off who we've shown so far, the majority of people who see it understand the type of comedy really well, kind of the cringe weird. Yeah. So I, I, I think we're lucky that people intuitively get it. 
Yeah. Including yourself, obviously. Yeah, it's like I, I a recent obsession of mine has been watching people react to this YouTube show called The Button. Has anyone here watched that? Oh. Oh. It, it's this, the concept is two, it's like speed dating where two strangers, um, although there is controversy because I'm starting to see re repeat faces. So I think it's like the same people. Um, but it's like speed dating. And um, if somebody pushes the button, the other person leaves and then a new person gets brought in. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. But like it, the button is like the worst wingman of all time. And it like in one of the more recent ones, it's it's like this person likes peeing in public. And, and it's like, well, oh, OK, how they're going to. Go, how are they going to make a conversation out of that? You know, it's, <laughs> but I just thought of a close analog um, that I think would be a good touchstone for people who are maybe iffy. Um, has, I, I'm, I'm sure people have seen this, but if you've seen too many cooks, it's that kind of what is happening. I can't look away why can't I look away? That's such a compliment <laughs> to be compared to too many cooks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I almost, I, and if you haven't watched too many cooks, I'm going to include on the YouTube interview. Here's like a link somewhere to watch it. You, it's, you, you sh everyone should go watch it. It's a cultural touchstone. It's as iconic as Vine. Um, that, that is a perfect that's like a great comparison because too many cooks is like making fun of like the sitcom trope of like people entering the room and like doing stuff and then it like morphs and goes off the tracks and messes with it and i think that's kind of exactly what we were going for with love dump of like taking these tropes and then playing with them and expanding the boundaries and like making it a little screwed up <laughs> <laughs> but the intentions are still the same and the feelings are the same. Like Austin, even going back to you talking about that rubber chicken, like <laughs> it's so bizarre, but the mood and the tone of the scene is like heartfelt, <laughs> right? Like it's yeah. just like, it's, it's emotional, but it's about a rubber chicken. It's just playing. Yeah, and, it, and it just gets closer. And then closer and then closer till it's you could see the individual pores on the plastic. Um, yeah, that was a true testament to Jesse. Jesse, you edited that part, right? Of the, oh, yeah. I mean, the close up of like my fingers like squeezing the chicken. Yeah, There's like a last little like close up of me just holding it and then the scene cuts to the next scene. But I love but that part. Also, you're acting, both of you, because both awesome. of you are just so, like, genuine. And yeah, well, it was, you know, it was very easy, Jason. I mean, because, I don't know, Austin, I think Jason did a good job of, like, reminding us that of the emotion of each scene. Because <laughs> yeah. like, it, it was kind of hard going into Layla and I wrote it, but it was kind of hard remembering that when we started acting out the scenes because you're so focused on the comedy and, and the lines, I think Jason really helped ground it. Like, so a scene with like a, a little cock chicken yeah, uh, ends up having some emotion in it, but I think is a big testament to Jason directing. We also were like cuckoo out of our minds because we were filming that scene at nine or 10 o'clock at night and we had just filmed the whole day and all and it was our first day of shooting so all of us were a little off our rockers and so jason really had to keep us on track of being like okay we got this come on like understand the tone of the scene let's stay in it and me and jesse were like ah! like <laughs> 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 oh goodness um but so something i discovered while going through the press kit um so um to kind of do a hard right turn um but i discovered you guys have a gofundme for um this movie um 
So do do either does anyone want to talk about that? Like, are you still raising money for um for the movie, or is no? How did that come about? We started it essentially when we started writing. After we wrote the script, we started raising money in the hopes of like maybe filming the the whole movie, or maybe just doing like a sizzle reel or like a just a, a proof of concept, and then we had done the proof of concept and put it up. And that's when we were like, okay, let's really try to raise money for it. But yeah, it was, uh, it was up for a couple of months and a lot of our friends were donating to it. And then a lot of, you know, also a lot of money towards the film came just out of pocket, but we were like, let's just freaking go for it. You know, Mm -hmm. it's low budget, but we're just going to go full throttle yeah and and i I don't and to be clear i don't think the low budget hurts it at all i feel (laughs) like it's shot as well as some of the tribeca movies i've seen um wow uh, i mean well also i should say it was also kind of an incredible deal because matt mahaffey is an incredible cinematographer and filmmaker (laughs) and so he he and Jesse had been friends for many years. And so it was kind of a great, you know, BOGO deal of like, since me and Jesse had been working on this, Matt was like, I'll join you guys and offered up all of his talents and skills of bringing on his camera and like setting up all the lights and like getting the crew together. It was, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. There's, um, one shot i really like when you guys are uh, on your first date um or after your first date at that weird restaurant that i uh i love that shot too austin i know exactly what you're talking about yeah there's like (laughs) i call it it the la la land shot okay yeah you know what i'm talking about the like perp there's like some purples there's some blues and some reds everything just kind of to use what the kids say it just kind of vibes um <laughs> but yeah it, it 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 surprised me with how well it was shot because i was like well i didn't think one i didn't think people were were making this kind of movie anymore i i've, I've got to be honest mm. I, I i feel like the parody has kind of almost died yeah um, we we've seen yeah. some kind of resurgence with a weird the Al Yankovic story, um, but uh, no shade on Roku. But I I don't know anyone who has access to the Roku channel. So mm-hmm. um, I I was like I opened my Apple TV and I was like okay how do I where's the Roku channel and they're like you have to own a Roku TV. I'm like oh okay uh, well maybe that not then but. Um, but yeah, let's talk about, um, real quick, like the, the art of the parody movie real quick, you know, um, just, I I think what was really important again, wine twirly answer, um, or a question, but like, what was really important to nail, to make it clear that, Hey, this is a love letter. This is a parody. It's not like this other thing you know yeah Yeah, i I, go ahead jason uh just uh real quick um i remember when we were first talking about the tone of the movie and we would have meetings about the tone and we were talking about how we wanted it to look Mm -hmm. and we were referencing hallmark and we know a lot of hallmark films that look really cheaply made and i we were saying, should we make it look cheap or should we really try to make this movie look good? And we just inev- we just decided that the characters are genuine, the, the world is wild, but everything should be taken seriously. Therefore, the filming of it all should be taken seriously. So going back to that shot that you were just referencing, Austin, we wanted it to be a beautiful shot after their first date right like simply they are falling in love these two characters in this wonky world and it's genuine to them 
Therefore, the cinematography is beautiful because it's a, the beginning of a beautiful love story. And I think that really um, helps parody because Layla and I grew up watching a lot of parody films that we loved, yeah. you know, Austin Powers, yes. um, a lot of these like late 90s, early 2000s parody movies. And all the characters in these films take their world seriously. So we really wanted to emphasize that Todd and Jessica, they're, it's not a joke to them. Everything is real and serious and their experience. Yeah, I think we're, we're all like, going off what Jason said, we're all like 90s, early 2000s babies. And those movies, I don't know, it's what we know mostly when we think of comedy outside of like, you know, Anchorman and Zoolander. And Zoolander is kind of a parody in its own a little bit of like the modeling industry. It's like a mockumentary at some times. Yeah. So I think we just, that's what we knew. And I, I think it's what we really wanted to make for that very reason. Obviously, us three, we're all very familiar with it. Um, yeah. This, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but all three of us were obsessed with Not Another Teen Movie when we were little, <laughs> <laughs> um, which sounds embarrassing because it's like such a dumb movie. But like, there are still parts of that movie that I remember crying, laughing to, that we definitely, I think, kind of paid an ode to in the in Love Dump. And I, I think, you know, parodies are underrated because a lot of times people are like, oh, well, that's like cheap humor, or I wanna see, I wanna see something that has more of a commentary. But sometimes a parody is all you need for commentary, you know, like, yeah everybody can relate to it and also it just keeps things light where there's like I just remember this moment in not another teen movie and we have like a moment similar to it in love dump um where the main character tells this whole long story about how her mom uh like got in, got into a car on this rainy rainy night and then was like uh you know it was the roads were wet it was slippery. And then the guy is like, oh my God, car crash. And she's like, no. She oh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's just like such a like <laughs> redirect, but I just love that stuff. Like, it's just so stupid, but so fun. Yeah. Like what I wouldn't give for like a, a, a another scary movie <laughs> or um, this is going to sound along the lines of your like how how dumb parody movies got like in a good way i went to the theater all right and saw a superhero movie and i was stoked i was like are you kidding me drake bell parodying spider-man <laughs> and then when he like and and what was even funnier is like when they did, went and did a spider-man show drake bell um um voiced spider-man so i was like wait what are they like it, it is like sony in on the joke on this one or did do they really uh, not yeah. know yeah that was bold yeah like Very i think bold. it's ultimate spider-man is the one he's in or something like that i never i never saw that one but the it's older so the older parody films, we love them so much and we're so inspired by them. But if you rewatch them now, so a lot of the jokes are not PC <laughs> and a lot of them are making yeah. fun of like people's identities and yeah. they, just, they just really go off course. But what's so great about Love Dump is there's none of that. Yeah. Like all the all the jokes in Love Dump are wacky and outlandish and also parody but it, it, it good old it's fun and not picking fun at someone it's the, the jokes are never bullying anybody whereas a lot of the late 90s and early 2000s movies uh, they go there in a negative way and they yes. you know, hold up that, that might be part of the reason why parodies kind of fell off because they were borderline not, not borderline just like straight up offensive and so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, 
I, I feel like uh, Talladega Nights 2 couldn't be made. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, right. But, um, um, but yeah, like, I, I, I feel like the jokes are earnest in that way. It's like Todd could say, oh, hey, um, your obsession with trash is kind of weird. Um, why are you like this? And could make fun of her rightly for it. Well, not rightly, uh, could make fun of her for it, but he chooses, you know, I'm going to go the earnest path because I see the stuff behind it. And I think that's kind of what makes love dump work is that it's that balance. Um, I think someone said this earlier of, um, where it's just that balance between, oh, we have to remember the emotions. I think it was you, Jesse. It was like, I have, I have to remember the emotions behind it when we're trying to go like that. Um, because I, I, I just think it works so well because there's even a moment where uh, a character where you're kind of not making fun of him, but uh, like he's this a, a smell or artesian or something like that. Um and yeah. you and he just talks like in a guffaw voice um mm -hmm. and, but it, throughout the movie it, it's it's never like haha -ha, you know look at this uh uh dork or anything like that so that's greatly yeah. appreciated um sorry yeah. Just, uh, yeah i just heard what you i i heard what you were about what some of what you said austin can you guys hear me by the way Yes. Um, yeah, I think it, you nailed it. It's like, I think Layla and I with the script went the route of like responding earnestly still to, instead of, yeah, but calling out how weird something is, it often behooved us to just lean into it and, and like, this is the world they live in. Um, and it ends up being funnier somehow uh, most of the time. I think we call out some stuff sometimes in the movie. I, I can't remember anything like. I think oh, when they're at the dinner seat and Todd thinks it's weird that they're serving bullshit, like that was a moment where where it's like oh, this is weird, but we don't do that for most of the movie, which I think helped help the humor. Yeah, and I was Sorry just saying. Yeah, no worries. I was just uh, I was saying something similar along the lines of that was. Um, that snooty character you have, um, I forget his name, but he's Jessica's ex, uh, where he, everyone's just smelling this bar of soap, and there's, and he's like, what does this smell like? What does this evoke? And it's like, nobody makes fun of him, but it's also like, hey, man, come on. <laughs> I think, I mean, everyone is such a weirdo in the movie that they don't even have a right to call anyone else out because everyone's so weird. <laughs> Everyone's to blame. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> persistent stain on um, that one character's shirt, um, Chester. It's just like, <laughs> why does he have that stain there all the time? And just like half buttoned uh, shirt. But you know what? Good for it. Good for Chester. Good for Chester. And he is just such a genuine guy in real life and just like so kind. So it just like, it really added to the humor. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's such a good film. I hope people check it out. Um, I think, um, I think it's a 22nd. I'll have details in the description of the YouTube, uh, uh, description thingy um, with tickets um, and uh, I just want to wish you all a great slam dance. It was great talking to you um, and I hope you got, well, I, I'm going to say this again, but have a great slam dance. Thanks, Austin. Uh, and uh, Austin. stay warm, everyone. It's, I hear uh, it's cold. It's tomorrow at 1.15 the 20th and then uh, on Monday night the 23rd at 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's Treasure Mountain Inn or something like that. Um, I think every, everything's the, at the Treasure Mountain Inn. The more I s keep saying that in every interview, I'm like, it's the Treasure <laughs> Mountain Inn. Oh, oh, it's the same place that I've been saying the last five interviews. I, Got I it. I keep seeing them sign off TMI and I'm like, why are they saying too much information? <laughs> I realize. 
but um thank you all so much i uh, i thank hope you. the film has a great reception um and if you don't have a uh, distribution yet i hope you get it <laughs> thanks Austin. Thanks so yeah, thank, thank you Austin. Thanks, appreciate it thanks for watching the movie too and uh, all the kind words you have a you have a good day you too jesse have a great flight Bye, guys.